you had to write a lot of stories in order to make any kind of money at all. And it was exhausting. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't keep using the same gimmicks. So he would get together with a couple of the other writers on the staff and some of the artists and they'd sit there and they'd brainstorm all weekend. And, you know, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I'd hear the typewriter go. The Batmobile, the, the Batcave, the Penguin, um, the Bat Signal. Because at that time in New York, they used to have searchlights in the skies looking for enemy planes and for theater openings. You know, you always have the searchlights going like this. Bill Finger was a very humanistic kind of fellow, very soft, gentle, and uh, a talented writer. And he brought to Batman, from again, from where I saw it, uh, a, a kind of uh, humanism that... Uh, a character like that sorely needed. Any of my father's stories were over, always characterized by oversized things. This, I, I'm sure, had a great deal to do with the 1939 World's Fair, where uh, they had giant typewriters and giant telephones. Um, the first television, prototypes for computers, new concepts in aircraft. Things that turned up in Dick Tracy as well, miniaturized television like and wristband radios. And it gave a man with ordinary powers super capabilities. Um, he liked the fact that the world was changing. He was born in 1914. The old world was rapidly disappearing.